गुड मॉर्निंग माय टॉपिक ऑफ प्रेजेंटेशन इज अनेस्थिशिया चैलेंजेस इन मिनिमली इन्विजिव कार्डियक सर्जरीज आई विल यूज द वर्ड एम आई सी एस फॉर मिनिमल इन्विजिव कार्डियक सर्जरी टूडे फॉर दिस टूडेज प्रेजेंटेशन आई ट्राइड नॉट टू गो टू मच इन टू द थियरी नॉट टू गो टू मच इन टू परफ्यूजन एंड सर्जिकल साइड आई केप इट एज अ प्रैक्टिकल टूडे वील ट्राई टू कवर वॉट इज एम आई सी एस वॉट आर इट्स बेनिफिट्स एंड डिसएडवांटेजेस वॉट आर द कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन हाउ टू गो फॉर प्री एनेस्थेटिक इवेल्युएशन मॉनिटरिंग ट्रांसिसोफेजल इकोकार्डियोग्राफी इन एम आई सी एस वन लंग वेंटिलेशन रिजनल एनेस्थिशिया फॉर एम आई सी एस एंड वॉट आर दी इरास प्रोटोकॉल सो वॉट इज मिनिमल इन्वेजिव कार्डियक सर्जरी अमेरिकन हार्ट असोसिएशन डिफाइन्स एम आई सी एस as cardiac surgery performed through a small chest wall incision then does not include a full sternotomy it started in 90s mid 90s in uh, mid 90s cosguro and con described the first minimally invasive mitral valve surgery and in 96 cosguro and sabic described first minimally invasive aortic valve surgery first minimally invasive of pump cabg was performed in united states in 2005 by dr joseph magin so this is the incision for cabg this is left lateral thoracotomy incision this is hardly 6 cm incision on left hand side it is right parasternal incision for aortic valve replacement the other is right anterolateral mini thoracotomy for mitral valve replacement what are the benefits of mics in the hands of a good surgeon it decreases overall morbidity it reduces post operative pain this low rate of surgical site infection specially related to sternum there is less blood loss and there is decreased need for transfusion it gives greater patient satisfaction with early discharge and faster return to normal daily activities there is one psychological benefit of having a very small scar in spite of having a big surgery it comes with some disadvantages also the most important disadvantage i feel is decrease surgical exposure because of very small incision so it causes technical difficulty in all the major steps like coronary grafting putting the valves taking the sutures even achieving hemostasis all these increases surgical and anesthesia time all the off pump cbgs have to be done on one lung ventilation so we have to bear and manage the effects of one lung ventilation and for cardiopulmonary bypass surgeons uses femoral cannulation so there are some complications related to femoral cannulations like trauma to the femoral vessel there are some contraindications there are some absolute and relative contraindication for mics actually patient selection is very important in mics what are the absolute contraindication aneurysm of ascending aorta more than 40 mm any condition where we cannot use transesophageal echocardiography aortic regurgitation more than moderate in a case of mvr or cbg aorto iliac diseases because the cannulation is femoral severe lv dysfunction and severe mitral annular calcification there are some relative contraindication but it depends to surgeon to surgeon and institute to institute some institute do many cases which are also there in contraindication list what are the relative contraindication pex pectus excavatum and chest deformities pleural adhesion history of chest trauma or refracture previous radiotherapy redo surgery all these decreases the surgical exposure then morbid obesity and aortic atheromatous plaque how to go for pre anesthetic evaluation in a case of mics the general principles of pre anesthetic evaluations are same as that of any conventional cardiac surgery like history taking physical examination lab investigation and imaging but there are some points which are important from mics point of view in cardiovascular system in echocardiography we should always look for concomitant regurgitant lesion like presence of moderate to severe aortic regurgitation where aortic valve surgery is not planned like moderate to severe ar in a case of mitral valve replacement or cabg it gives lot of trouble it gives trouble during cardioplegia delivery and causes lv distension so so it should be always noted in a case of cabg elevated pa pressures preoperatively should be carefully looked into because one lung ventilation again increases rv afterload and pulmonary artery pressure it should be very carefully noted peripheral vascular lesions like plaque aneurysm dissection stents graft especially in aorto iliac femoral vessel should be noted because the cannulation 
is femoral a detailed examination of respiratory system is very important we should always look for the history of chronic lung diseases the patient who is not having any chronic lung condition or any comorbidity related to the res respiratory system physical examination baseline saturation and hrct chest will give us a fair idea of how is the respiratory system and whether the patient can tolerate one lung ventilation or not but if the patient is having any chronic lung condition we should always do abg and pulmonary function test presence of po2 less than 60 pco2 more than 50 in a baseline abg value and fev1 less than 40% of the predicted in pft these patients can give a trouble during intra op and post op intra op there is tendency to desaturate and post op they are difficult to wean and extubate so any patient who is having chronic lung condition optimization is very important and we should always encourage incentive spirometry for all the patients because they have to go through one lung ventilation recently we did one patient 70 year old male who is having a chronic asthma of around 30 years we optimized that patient preoperatively with bronchodilators and steroids and to our surprise that patient tolerated one lung ventilation quite well in case of gastrointestinal system any contraindication to put te probe becomes a contraindication for micf because te is mandatory for micf any condition like esophageal structure webs tumor varices active bleeding can be a contraindication to put te and micf severe peptic ulcer disease should be noted because after putting the probe it can bleed there are some case related factors very obese patient especially females with the large breast there is difficulty in surgical access and also we know that obesity is a big problem to anesthesiocide also they have a decrease functional residual capacity chest wall deformity patients again can complicate surgical access and they have a uh, limited pulmonary reserve so these kind of a patients are difficult from anesthesia as well as surgical point of view very small patients with small thoracic cavity again surgical access becomes difficult and small small size of the femoral vessel this problem and difficulty in putting the femoral venous cannulation usually surgeons prefer femoral vessels more than 5 mm for putting the femoral cannulation what monitoring do we use apart from routine ecg saturation arterial line etco2 temperature abg urine output we put pulmonary artery catheter for all cbg patient all cbg patients have to be done on one lung ventilation we have to isolate the left lung it increases rv after load increases pa pressure so effect of one lung on cardiovascular system should be always be noted and carefully monitored so pulmonary artery catheter we have made it mandatory for all cbg patient we have made te for a te compulsory for all micfs patient be it val or cbg we use external dfi paddle for all the patients because these very small incisions can uh, cause difficulties in giving shock with the internal paddle so we use external dfi paddle for all the patient we'll see so, some important points about transesophageal echocardiography te helps in the confirmation of preoperative diagnosis helps in the confirmation of cannulation cardioplegia delivery lv distension during cardioplegia delivery venting and assessment of regional wall motion abnormalities e is mandatory for visualization of cardiopulmonary bypass cannulation surgeons put guide wire through femoral vein for ivc cannulation and we have to visualize that guide wire when it comes to ra through ivc this guide wire can go in hepatic system cannulations over that can have a devastating complications the first video on my screen is mid esophageal bicaval view you can see the wire coming from ivc into ra after visualization of that wire only we should allow surgeons to put ivc cannula also when anesthesiologist put the svc cannula we should always visualize the guide wire coming into svc after we after we cannulate it from right igv the other video of te is descending aorta long axis view for putting femoral arterial cannulation surgeons put guide wire through femoral artery and we have to visualize that in descending aorta so you can see the wire moving in descending aorta this is 
descending aorta long axis view after confirmation of guide wire only we should allow surgeons to put arterial cannula the luxury of seeing the heart and act accordingly is all gone in mics so we have to rely on the te for assessment of regional wall motion abnormalities this is a transgastric mid papillary view assessment of regional wall motion abnormalities in a case of cebg preoperatively intraoperatively and postoperatively all have to be done through te only recently we did on patient patient is posted for mics cebg is a preoperative eco showing ef of around 45% but uh, after induction when we did te we found out that ef was only 25% so the plan of micas was changed and we went with conventional cardiac surgery te is helpful for going on bypass after cannulation we have to look for lv distension during cardioplegy administration the presence of aortic regurgitation can result in lv distension and inadequate myocardial protection this also we have to monitor on transesophageal echocardiography there are some things which can be missed on preoperative trans thoracic echocardiography with like patent 4m in oval sinus venosus asd and lsvc which is left superior vena cava detection of asd and lsvc rules out the possibility of mics so we have to always look for these while doing the te like any other conventional surgeries T is very important for assessment of prosthetic valves after replacement. One lung ventilation, actually, one lung ventilation is a topic in itself, very difficult to cover in a limited time. But I have just taken few important points of goals of T, ventilation during the T, and what are the problems we can face during one lung ventilation. All the off-pump CBGs have to be done on uh, done through left lateral thoracotomy requires left lung isolation. so one lung ventilation is mandatory what are the goals of one lung ventilation in cbg we have to provide a complete lung isolation we have to maintain adequate gas exchange saturation above 90% co2 about 60 and we have to maintain pulmonary artery pressure and right ventricular systolic pressure because one lung ventilation increases rv afterload and pa pressure most of the one lung ventilation strategies advocate Uh, volume control or pressure control pressure control especially in case of uh, lung injuries or expected lung injuries most of these one lung ventilation strategies advocate a tidal volume of 5 to 8 ml per kg uh, it is adjusted to keep the peak airway pressure less than 35 plateau airway pressure less than 25 respiratory rate 14 to 20 depending upon the etco2 and maintenance of pco2 around 40 fi2 initially have to be adjusted one and then decrease according to the po2 levels we should always keep a peep of at least 5 except in copd patient what are the adverse effects which we can see in a case of cbg in lung one lung ventilation it causes hypoxemia hypercarbia all these factors increases pulmonary vascular resistance and causes additional strain on the rv leading to rv dysfunction as we know lv uh, rv dysfunction is as disastrous as lv dysfunction depressed cardiac output can further increase the dead space ventilation and it limits the pulmonary blood flow most of the cbg patients have depressed cardiac output ventilation abnormal <coughs> ventilation abnormalities may also lead to arrhythmias and may also poorly tolerated particularly in patients with marginal ventricular dysfunction so whenever the patient desaturates or his pa are rising in one lung ventilation in cbg the first thing we should do is on go on a uh, double lung ventilation keep the fio to 1 and then wait till the patient settles and proceed what are the available methods today for one lung ventilation double lumen tube and bronchial blocker we have used double lumen tube for some cases initially but we feel bronchial blockers have much more advantages in a case of cabg or cardiac cases dlts are better in cases of lungs where uh, we have to give cpap to the non ventilated lungs or there is chances of any spillage but in case of cabg bronchial blockers have many advantages first it is very easy to insert they are non traumatic there is no need to extend the tube after putting the double lumen tube before shifting the patient to icu after surgery is done we have to exchange it with our normal single lumen tube dlts can be difficult in difficult airways there is no problem of putting bronchial blocker in difficult airways and for dlt we have to size the dlt according to the gender and weight there is nothing that 
<clears throat> in bronchial blockers. There's one side for all. On right hand side, we can see the beautiful view of Carina. This is uh, Ambuscope, we use it for putting the bronchial blocker. You can see the bronchial blocker going into the left lung bronchus, sorry, left bronchus. The beauty of MICS lies in its very small incision. And on that, if the incision becomes painless, the satisfaction of the patient is incredible. Different institute uses different uh, regional anesthesia technique for analgesia in MICS, like thoracic epidural anesthesia, paravertebral block, serratus anterior plane block, intrapleural block, intercostal nerve block. We routinely put erector spiny catheter for all MICS cases. Erector spiny block. This block was first described by Ferrero and colleagues in 2016 for two patients with rib-related neuropathic pain. It involves injection of local anesthetic in the erector spiny facial plane, superficial to the tip of the transfer process of T4 or T5 vertebra deep to the erector spiny muscle. So this erector spiny plane lies in between the erector spiny muscle and transfer process of vertebra. And we have to inject local anesthetic in that plane. Erector spiny plane catheter provide intraoperative and postoperative analgesia, decreases opioid consumption, reduces ICU stay and hospital length of stay. And uh, in patients undergoing minimally invasive cardiac surgery. There are many papers and articles advocates the use of erector spiny catheter in a case of MICS. This is how we do it video. We have shot one video in our operating room. This is the patient position. Before putting any lines, when patient enters in OT, we put erector spiny catheter. For CBG, we put on the left side. For MVR, for ABR, we have to put it on the right side. We use uh, epidural set for catheter, putting this catheter. I'm starting the video. This is the patient position. We do it uh, under USG guidance. So this is the entry of the needle at T4, T5 level. We have to identify T4, T5. We, here we can see the transfer process, epidural needle hitting the transfer process. After hitting the needle, we have to do some hydro dissection with saline. Now you can see the spread of saline in that plane. This hydro dissection helps in the easier passage of the catheter. Now this is the passage of the catheter. We can see the movement of catheter in the uh, USG. And after placement of the catheter, if we inject the saline, we can see the movement of saline there. I don't know uh, whether you are able to appreciate, we have to see the movement of saline above the transfer process in the erector spiny plane. It provides excellent analgesia for all the MICS cases. Even we use it for all the thoracic cases, all the lung cases. Results are really incredible. This is the narrative review. This is the last slide I'm on. This is the narrative review of ERAS protocol, early enhanced recovery after surgery protocol. Uh, these focus on three important things. First one is improving patient's preoperative physical and mental status, increasing cardiopulmonary capacity and optimizing nutritional status. Second one is modifying intraoperative management by standardizing minimally invasive surgery and early extubation. And third one is implementing an enhanced postoperative recovery protocol that integrates individualized analgesia and standardized physiotherapy program. A good patient selection, a good preoperative Evaluation, a good preoperative optimization, a small incision keyhole surgery along with good analgesia. Early recovery, early extubation is equal to what is happy and comfortable patient. Thank you.